Hey there, BQ here again. This is my second upload for the day, the 31st of August. It is the King of the Mound podcast YouTube channel, and we are talking the Pop TV rumored renewal. Please hit the subscribe button here on the channel before you do anything else. So once again, I'm citing Dave Meltzer. Are you calling me This is not liar? something I like to do, not because I don't think he has some truth to what he says at times, but because I think he highlights the negative a little too much. I think that he publishes his personal opinion as fact way too much. And he's that guy, he's that that friend of yours, um, that sister-in-law of yours, whatever, that, that gives the backhanded compliments when they come over for dinner. So you've lost weight and they're the one, oh, you're, you're, you're right, you're not as fat as you were last week. He's that guy. So that's why I'm not a huge fan. And of course, you know, he, he's the por person who reports this. And then he has to throw in at the end, well, it's not a, what was the term he used? It's not a financially effective deal. So we'll get into that here in a bit. So there's some, there's some positives to this. They have security. They're secure for another year, for all of 2018. And that is a good thing. I know a lot of us would like to see him on a much bigger network, but maybe it's not in the cards for professional wrestling. You know, there's, there's one monopoly and then there's kind of everybody else. I know we like to live in this wrestling bubble that maybe we don't like to, but we do live in this wrestling bubble. Professional wrestling is not near as positive, uh, near as, uh, popular as we perceive it to be. If you compare it to other sports, you compare it to, um, you know, sitcoms to, um, reality television, it's not even knocking on the door ratings wise and that's with any company so maybe it's just not in the cards but w there's one thing we got to take you, we got have we have to be real okay we can be a huge fan of the company but let's be real they are not building up enough momentum right now to be taken into consideration by a spike tv or by a, a larger network they're, they're just not we have to be real about that yes they've gotten the, the ratings up from when they de debuted on pop um, and they've had some pretty good, you know, pretty good nights and everything, but they're not, they're not on anyone's radar right now. So it's a challenge to the company to step it up and to create must see television, because that's what, that's what kind of kills it at the end of the day, just because we see, okay, a hundred, 320,000 people watched it. That's not all the, that watched it. And that's, I get so mad when people, um, harp on that because there are two things over the course of seven days that I watch live TV impact and bachelor in paradise and that's it everything else i watch on dvr and that's how a majority of americans watch tv and last time pop tv reported it they said you know impact viewership was close to half a million when they factored in um D dvr so there's more eyes on a product than we than, than than the dirt sheets and everything want to want to say want to make us believe but with that being said the reason the ratings aren't as high as they should be because they're not creating must-see television. When we had Destination X and it was a, the semi-live show, I mean, that's that's different. Like, you, that feels must-see. But even as, even as good as some of these episodes of Impact have been this year, are they creating, like, the must-see television and are they doing the, you know, like Meltzer would say, the five-star matches? You, you know what I'm saying? So they do have to step up the product at the same time, which I fully believe that they are. My first thought when I heard about the pop TV news I was like, wow, this is really early to be reporting this. But then I thought about it too, because I'm no expert in this field. I'm not going to pretend that I am. We're used to Dixie Carter batting in the ninth inning and, uh, and, and securing that TV deal. You know, now we have security in place and, and now we're going into bound for glory for the first time in three years, just ready to enjoy the show. And not worried about is the company going to survive when the show is over. So um, that, that that's what I think is really positive about all this. And we have to take into consideration. A lot of people will say, I see this on social media constantly, and it's it's ignorant. And I don't mean ignorant like I'm I'm being a dick and you're ignorant. I'm, I'm talking it, the, you know, the actual literal sense of what ig ignorant is. You know, it's uh, uninformed, uneducated. All right. There's there, there's an ignorant view on it on how important it is for for impact to be on a channel that is you know sandwiched by good programming and on a channel that 
appeals to the target demographic of people who watch wrestling. Okay. So what comes on before impact? I think it's uh, days of our lives reruns of days of our lives. There's like a, a 2% chance that people in that, uh, that target audience have any interest in watching impact after people who watch soap opera reruns. I mean, come on. Pop TV doesn't have a, 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 a solid program lineup. It's always, they're always trying out different shows and different comedies and playing old movies and, and nothing, nothing feels really solid. There's some decent programming on pop. Sometimes, um, you know, I'll still have it on, on Friday, Saturday, you know, cause like I said, I don't watch much first run TV, might flip the TV on and I'm like, oh, this is, it's actually kind of interesting. So there's some decent programming on there, but it's not the target demographic for professional wrestling. So the chances of the casual viewers tuning in, because there's, you know, the, the bigger company has all sorts of casual viewers and that's, that plays a huge role and impact the show impact doesn't have that. They just have the global force wrestling fans. So it is important to try to get on a better network, but maybe it's not in the cards. It, it might not be, you know, if you think of, the El Rey network and uh, whatever network Ring of Honor is on. I mean, they're fairly obscure networks too. They're not, they're probably worse than than uh, Pop TV, to be honest. And I see it a lot of time on um, social media where people say, "Well, if people really wanted to see the show, they would watch the show. It doesn't matter what channel it's on; they'll find it. They do find it. They find it on YouTube because that's the convenient way of watching the show." Or watching uh, certain clips or the highlights. Because if they're not creating must-see television, then people are going to see the highlights on YouTube. So, um, yeah, they got to get on a better network. It, it's uh, pretty important. And last time, um, I don't know if I said this already, last time Pop TV reported they reported it, they said they hit almost half a million viewers when it comes to DVR and everything. So there's eyes on the product. And there's no reason to believe that they can't eclipse that number if they were on a bigger network. But the, the show has to be better. They have to build more momentum. They have to bring in um, some better names. I mean, they're bringing in good names. I'm not, I'm not knocking. But, you know, they, they have to hit those home runs on, in the indies with the indie darlings and everything. Which is, they're not even close to doing that right now. So, that's very important. But, you know, I'm, I'm just happy they get, they're on a network. And again, you know, the best part about this is that we can just enjoy Bound for Glory without the BS this year for the first time in a few years. So um, hats off to them in that regard. And maybe they have a huge 2018 and and maybe maybe our luck changes the following year. But, you know, let's just take what we got. Let's look at the positives of it. They're not going anywhere. They're not dying, as people would have you believe. And, um, you know, when Meltzer made the uh, comment about it not being financially effective, I mean, he was just, the, the point that he was making, which was really unnecessary, but they have a, a revenue split with Pop TV. So, when the, you know, whatever the revenue is from the commercials, they split it. And it's not a whole lot because, again, the network plays reruns and old comedies and things like that. So the, the ad space is very cheap. Think of the Super Bowl where companies are paying a thousand, uh, sorry, a thousand, one million dollars for 30 seconds of time. You know, what they're paying on Pop TV is peanuts. So that's why the uh, company is not getting a whole lot from it. So that's why the, the India deal, the UK deal is so important. You know, if they're able to get into Mexico, I, and I know they're in 120 countries, but from what I understand, a lot of those are revenue split. You know, it's it's not bringing in the money that India and the UK brings in. You know, that's a combined seven million a year with those two networks, and that's their main income stream. So that they got to find uh, other ways to be creative, bring in money, build momentum, and maybe we'll see, you know, a different network in the future. So I want to know what you guys think about it. Uh, let me know in the comments. Please hit subscribe. This is BQ. It is the King of the Mount podcast YouTube channel. Thanks for listening, folks.